The NE555 is an incredibly versatile integrated circuit and today we will use it in three different ways. As an oscillator in what is also called the A-stable mode, as a timer in the so-called monostable mode and last as a flip-flop in the bistable mode. Coming right up. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. Yes, I know, microcontrollers are amazing, but today I want to show you that you don't always need them. And the NE555 is a perfect example for that. Here you can see the pinout. Let's look at what's inside and what these eight terminals do. VDD and ground are the connections for the positive and negative power supply. Together with the resistors R1, R2 and R3, this generates a voltage divider into three equal parts. The voltage between R1 and R2 is two-thirds of VDD and the voltage between R2 and R3 is one-third of VDD. If you use a 9 volt power supply, which we will do later, then these voltages are 6 volt and 3 volt. Some people say that the three 5 kilo ohm resistors are what gives the NE555 its name, but apparently this has been a happy coincidence and was not done intentionally. Comp1 and Comp2 are comparators. A comparator has two inputs, here called plus and minus, and one output. Whenever the voltage at plus is larger than the voltage at minus, the output is a logical one. And whenever the voltage at minus is larger than the voltage at plus, the output is a logical zero. RS1 is a so-called RS flip-flop. Its operation is very simple. Whenever S is 1 and R is 0, the output Q is set to 1 as well. Whenever R is 1 and S is 0, the output is reset back to 0. When both R and S are 0, nothing happens, and when they're both 1, the output is undefined, so we should try to avoid that configuration. The additional reset input overrides anything that happens at the R and S inputs. It is an inverted input, which is why there is this little circle here and why it is called slash reset instead of reset. When the reset input is low, the output Q gets reset to 0, and when reset is high, the output remains unchanged. INV1 is a simple inverter. If its input is 1, it outputs a 0, and if its input is 0, it outputs a 1. And last, T1 is an NPN transistor. It is activated whenever Q is 0, and it is deactivated whenever Q is 1. More on that later. Okay, now that we know about the internal components of the NE555, we can talk about the external inputs and outputs. We already talked about VDD and ground, but what do the other pins do? Control is a reference pin that we can use to change the voltage at the minus input of COMP1. We could connect it to VDD with a different resistor and therefore change the reference voltage at COMP1. Here we don't need it, so we mostly connect it to ground with a 10 nanofarad capacitor for stability. Trigger is the minus input of COMP2. Whenever its voltage is less than one third of VDD, the output of COMP2 goes high and the RS flip-flop is set, so that Q is high too. This triggers the output of the NE555 to go high as well, and that's where the name of this pin comes from. Threshold is the plus input of COMP1, and it can be used to turn the output of the NE555 off. How? If the voltage at this pin exceeds the control voltage, the output of COMP1 goes from 0 to 1, which resets the RS flip-flop. Then its output Q is 0, and the output of the NE555 is 0 too. It gets its name from the fact that it resets the NE555 if the voltage surpasses a certain critical threshold, which is two-thirds VDD in this case. Output is directly connected to the Q output of the RS flip-flop. It can drive up to 200 milliamps and can be directly connected to small loads. It is a push-pull output, meaning that it can drive loads both against VDD and against ground. Discharge is a very helpful pin when using the NE555 as a timer. In the standard configuration, the discharge pin is connected to ground via the transistor T1. Why? Because in the default state, the output of the RS flip-flop is zero, which gets inverted by INV1 and therefore drives the base of T1. This in turn connects the discharge pin to ground. If the RS flip-flop is set, however, the discharge pin is floating. This pin gets its name from the fact that we can use it to charge and discharge timing capacitors and we will talk a lot about that later. And last, slash reset, which we already talked about, overrides the RS flip-flop. This pin is very useful when we want to use the NE555 as a bistable flip-flop and whenever we don't need the timing features. Otherwise, we usually just tie this pin to VDD permanently. One of the most common uses of the NE555 is that of an oscillator, where it provides a periodic on and off signal. And you can use that signal to make an LED blink or use it as a clock signal for a digital circuit. 
The oscillator mode is also called A-stable because it doesn't have a permanent or a stable state. It keeps switching between on and off. Let's take a look at the schematic. When the circuit is first powered on, the capacitor C1 is uncharged, which means that the voltage at the trigger pin is zero. This sets the internal flip-flop and turns on the output and disables the discharge transistor. The capacitor C1 is now charged via resistor R1 and diode D1 and the voltage at the trigger pin soon exceeds a third of VDD, but nothing happens yet. Only when the voltage at C1 exceeds two thirds of VDD at the threshold pin, the internal flip-flop is reset, turning the NE555's output off and enabling the discharge transistor. The capacitor C1 is now discharged through resistor R2 and diode D2 and the voltage at C1 decreases. If it falls below one third of VDD, the trigger pin will again set the NE555's internal flip-flop to 1. The capacitor is no longer discharged and can therefore be charged again through R1 and diode D1 and the loop begins all over again. The diodes D1 and D2 are there so that the capacitor charges only through R1 and only discharges through R2. This way the on and off times can be adjusted independently which can be very convenient. You can calculate them like this. In our example, R1 and R2 are both equal to 10 kilo ohm and C1 is equal to 22 microfarad. This means we need to put in 10 and 22 in this formula, which gives us T on and T off to be 152 milliseconds. And the frequency is around 6.5 hertz. Now that we understand how the circuit works, let's build it on a breadboard. Here's what you need. A 170 pin breadboard, a 9 volt battery with a battery clip, the NE555, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, one 470 ohm resistor, two 1 and 4148 diodes, a 22 microfarad capacitor, a 10 nanofarad capacitor and an LED. As always, you can find a detailed list of all of these components in the companion article on Friendly Wire. Just follow the link in the description. Place the 170 pin breadboard in front of you with row 1 facing up and insert the NE555 in row 7 with its notch facing to the top left. The pins are labeled like this. Next, insert the resistors R1 and R2, cross over to the left and insert the diode D2. Make sure that the diode's cathode, the black ring, points up. Now insert the diode D1 like this and make sure that the diode's cathode, the black ring, points down. Insert the 22 microfarad capacitor between pin 6 and row 12 and make sure the negative terminal of the capacitor is connected to row 12. The negative terminal of electrolytic capacitors is usually highlighted with a big minus sign. Then insert the 10 nanofarad capacitor between pin 5 and row 12 and this capacitor can be plugged in either way. Cross over to row 12 on the left and then connect up to pin 1. These black wires here serve as our ground rail. Next connect pin 8 and pin 4 of the NE555 and these red wires here serve as the VDD rail. Now it's time to connect pin 6 and 2 of the NE555. Then insert the 470 ohm resistor between pin 3 of the NE555 and row 15 and place the LED between rows 12 and 15. Make sure that the LED's cathode, the shorter wire, plugs into row 12 and the LED's anode, which is the longer wire, is connected to row 15. You can plug in the positive terminal of the 9V battery into the red VDD power rail anywhere you want and the same is true for the negative terminal which can be plugged into the black ground rail anywhere you like. Now you're done and your LED should start flashing. Say you want to turn on an LED for a few seconds and then turn it off again automatically. This is exactly when you can use the NE555 as a timer. This timer mode is also called monostable because the LED is always off and that's the only stable state unless you press a button. Let's take a look at the schematic. When nothing is going on and the circuit is powered on for the first time, the LED is off and the capacitor C1 is discharged through the discharge pin because it is tied to ground. When you press the push button S1, however, the trigger pin is grounded and sets the output of the NE555 to high. Also, it disables the discharge pin so that now the capacitor C1 can be charged over the resistor R1. The voltage on the capacitor slowly increases and as soon as it reaches two-thirds of VDD, the threshold pin resets the NE555 output to zero and connects the discharge pin to ground which immediately discharges the capacitor C1. Because there is no discharge resistor, this happens instantaneously without any delay. The capacitor C1 is now fully discharged, the output of the NE555 is turned off and everything can begin all over again as soon as anybody presses the button S1. 
So you see that the LED is only on for a specified amount of time and this time is determined by the capacitor C1 and the resistor R1 through which the capacitor is charged. This is the formula. In our example we have R1 equal to 100 kilo ohm and C1 equal to 22 microfarad. So we have to insert 122 into the formula. This gives us a time of around 2.4 seconds. Okay, now that that makes some sense to us, let's go ahead and build it on a breadboard. Here's what you need. A 170 pin breadboard, a 9 volt battery with a battery clip, the NE555, a push button, one 10 kilo ohm resistor, one 100 kilo ohm resistor, one 470 ohm resistor, a 22 microfarad capacitor, a 10 nanofarad capacitor and an LED. Place the 170 pin breadboard in front of you with row 1 facing up. Insert the NE555 in row 7 with its notch facing to the top left. Next, insert the resistor R1 between pin 7 and 8 of the NE555. Connect pin 7 and 6 of the NE555 with a short piece of wire. Then insert the 22 microfarad capacitor between pin 6 and row 12 and make sure the negative terminal of the capacitor is connected to row 12. Next, place the 10 nanofarad capacitor next to it between pin 5 and row 12. Next, we can create the ground rail. Cross over to row 12 on the left, connect up to pin 1 of the NE555 and then all the way up to row 1 of the breadboard. This is where you place the push button and make sure you insert it exactly like this. It is easy to accidentally rotate it by 90 degrees. Then connect the other side of the push button with pin 2 of the NE555 and insert the pull up resistor R2 like this. Next create the VDD power rail where we will later connect plus 9 volt. Connect the pull up resistor with pin 8 of the NE555, continue down to row 13, then cross over to row 13 on the left and finally connect to pin 4 of the NE555. Now it's time to insert the 470 ohm LED resistor between pin 3 of the NE555 and row 15 and then place the LED between row 15 and row 12. Make sure that the LED's anode is connected to row 15 and that its cathode is connected to row 12. Finally, connect the 9 volt battery clip. Its positive terminal can be plugged into row 3 on the right and the negative terminal goes into row 1 on the left. And this is how the finish timer looks like in action. At the very beginning we saw that the NE555 contains a flip-flop. Now if we forget about all the charging and discharging of capacitors, we can actually use the flip-flop on its own. This way one push button turns an LED on and another push button resets it back to off. Both of these states are stable, which is why this mode is also called bistable. Here's the schematic. It only uses the two pins trigger and reset and it works like this. When you first connect the circuit to power, trigger and reset are both high. This means that the output of the NE555 is low and the LED is off. When you press reset, S2, nothing happens and the output stays low. But when you press set or S1, then trigger is pulled to ground which sets the output of the NE555 to high and the LED turns on. If you press S1 again, nothing else happens, the LED just stays on. But if you now press reset, S2, the NE555 resets to its default state and the LED turns off again. This is pretty simple and there aren't even any formulas this time because the mode is bistable. If you want to give this a try yourself, here's what you need. A 170 pin breadboard, a 9 volt battery with a battery clip, the NE555, two push buttons, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, one 470 ohm resistor, a 10 nanofarad capacitor and an LED. And now let's build the circuit. Place the 170 pin breadboard in front of you with row 1 facing up. Insert the NE555 in row 7 with its notch facing to the top left. Insert the two push buttons in row 1 and 15 like this. Take a close look at the picture and make sure you insert the push buttons exactly like this. It is easy to accidentally rotate them by 90 degrees, believe me, I know. Next we create the ground rail. Connect row 17 on the left to pin 1 of the NE555, then continue up to row 1. Cross over to the right and then finally connect down to pin 6 of the NE555. Then insert C1 between pins 5 and 6 of the NE555. Its polarity doesn't matter, you can plug it in either way. Next, insert the two pull-up resistors R1 and R2 in rows 3 and 15. Then, create the VDD power rail that will be later connected to plus 9 volt. Connect row 3 on the right to pin 8 of the NE555 and then connect down to row 15. Now it's time to connect the push buttons to the NE555. 
S1 is connected to pin 2 and S2 is connected to pin 4. Finally, insert the 470 ohm LED resistor between pin 1 of the NE505 and row 12 and place the LED between row 12 and pin 3. Make sure that the LED's cathode is connected to row 12 and its anode is connected to pin 3. And last, connect the battery clip. The positive plus 9 volt terminal plugs into row 3 and the negative terminal plugs into row 1. And yes, this circuit works as a flip-flop just as intended. I hope I could show you today that the NE555 is a very useful integrated circuit, but I also hope that I could inspire you to give it a try yourself. Check out the companion article in the description for links on where to buy everything that I used in this video. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what else you want to learn and I will see you next time.